How's it going there guys, Dave Nier here, and today I got another movie review for you, and in fact I'm reviewing two movies today, both of the Enter Viral YouTube channel, found footage horror films, both focused on Jeff the Killer, because they made two of these, one of which is uh, just under a half hour long, and the other is just under an hour long. And I'm going to be talking about spoilers in this double review, and that's mainly because I really don't have a whole lot good to say about these movies. I don't recommend them at all. If you're a fan of enter viral videos, well, then yeah, go ahead and check these movies out before you watch this review. But, yeah, I really don't have a whole lot good to say about them, and so I, I just want to talk about spoilers so I can explain my points better. So yeah, all spoilers. But yeah, the plots, or I'm going to talk about the half-hour one first. The plot's pretty simple, as is generally the case with found footage horror films. Uh, you know, this guy, his house gets broken into, and there's this CD there, and he looks at it, and he's like, oh, pff, I'm not gonna, or, or, and of course he's recording, he's like, no, I'm not gonna watch the CD, um, I'm just gonna turn it into the police, and then two seconds later he decides, never mind, let's watch it, because I'm an idiot, and there's a guy saying, hey, how about you come to this house so that you can have this $100,000 that he shows on camera, and because the guy's an idiot, he's like, yeah, let's go. And he brings two of his friends and go there and, big surprise, get killed by a masked murderer. Ma blah, masked murderer, not mass murderer. Although well, it might be a mass murderer. I don't know. But here's the first main problem. Besides the fact that just the characters are completely unlikable, they're douchebags, they don't have fun banter at all, they're just unlikable, and the acting is bad. That's bad, but you know, just the first problem is... Right off the bat, um, it's not a Jeff the Killer movie. It's a cheesy, cheap, found footage, knockoff Zodiac Killer movie. Because right at the beginning, it says, The Zodiac Killer left this message in a newspaper back in the day in the 60s when he was killing people. And this message, um, or, you know, it looks like a prophecy that something is going to happen on, I think, March 21st, 2014. And the footage that this guy filmed is was filmed on March 21st, 2014, so this is indisputable proof that the Zodiac Killer has returned. That's cheesy. Like, that's really corny. I mean, you know, I'm not even talking about the fact that, you know, you could argue that that's kind of distasteful because the Zodiac Killer was a real guy who murdered quite a few innocent people, and, you know, if, if that type of thing offends you, you know, then you might get offended at that. But, you know, I mean, th it's not like it's th this is the first time it's been done. I mean, the same thing has been done with Chernobyl Diaries. Yeah, Chernobyl, that wasn't a good thing. And takes a chance on Massacre, technically based on a true story. Oh, no, y you know, I don't really take offense to that. But some people might, just mentioning that, because I don't know, why not? But it's just, it just comes off as so corny, like, really? Just this random tape of some people apparently getting killed. You know, obviously it's not real, but let's say that it was real, the person that posted the video and put that text there, like, in what way is this even remotely indisputable proof that the Zodiac Killer has returned? It's just some footage of some people getting killed on March 21st, and that's it. There's no real connections to the Zodiac Killer there. It was just a really cheap way for um, the guys who made the movie to just tie this into something big. But it's even worse because they mispromote it and say, this is a Jeff the Killer movie because it's in the title. Real Jeff the Killer, caught on tape. I think that's the exact title of the video. And real is in all caps. When it's not about Jeff the Killer, it's about the Zodiac Killer. And it's hardly about the Zodiac Killer. They just said it's the Zodiac Killer because, hey, that's a big name. And we want to get big views. So we're just going to mispromote our film and make a really bad one at that one that's not interesting. And also, there's this weird... Stupid thing with a mannequin head, okay? Basically, the f it first shows up, I think the first time it shows up is when the guy, he first goes into his house after it's been broken in. He records pre past, uh, or like the freezer doors open, and there's a mannequin head there. And I noticed that, I was like, wait, what the heck was that? I was like, that's that's a weird thing. I doubt that was intentional. That's just a really strange thing for someone to just have in their freezer. Like, I'm talking about the actual person making the movie. But then it shows up again, I was like, Okay, so it is intentional, though it shows up again, and again, and again. Now, and this is never explained. And I don't have a problem with things not being explained, uh, especially in found footage horror films, you know, I, I don't mind. Like, if something is weird and creepy, if it's not explained, it doesn't matter as long as it's weird and creepy and adds to the ominous tone of the film. But it doesn't do that here, because the movie isn't scary even a little bit. I was not on the edge of my seat, because I don't care about the characters, and also, 
It doesn't add to an ominous tone, it just made me laugh. I was like, the heck is that doing there? What? Like, what? And it really doesn't tie into anything. There's no explanation, and it just doesn't feel significant in the slightest. It's there because. And that's it. I mean, I honestly doubt that there is even any sort of symbolism or meaning there. They just put it there because, hey, why not? It's the stupidest Easter egg. <laughs> and yes, okay, this is like a zero-budget found footage horror film. You know, in the past reviews for Interviral Films, I've partially made that excuse. And I know that excuse can only go so far, but still, you know, in the case of the Slender Man movie, I enjoyed it for what it was, and same with The Rake. That, you know, had me on the edge of my seat. I enjoyed that for what it was. Here, it just takes it too far. This just feels completely lazy and effortless. It's not entertaining at all. It's not scary. It's pretty terrible, actually, and I hate to say that because, again, you know, they made it with no money. So you gotta cut them some slack to some extent, but I can only do that to some extent. Because if you make a bad movie, then you make a freaking bad movie. That's... Well, that's all there is to it. It's only a half hour long, but really, you gotta give it, like, an F, because I just don't feel any soul or effort in this at all, you know. And as for the hour-long version, it's worse, because it's an hour long, okay? It mainly focuses on this one guy, I mean, him and his friend, they're gonna go film out at this creepy house, because, I don't know, they're idiots, and they're completely unlikable, arguably even more so than the half hour one. And, you know, his friends, they get killed off pretty quickly, and the guy's, like, panicking, like, Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! This guy's trying to kill me! And so, for the entire movie, he's just running off on his own, trying not to get killed by this guy. And I don't give a crap about the guy who's filming the movie. And so I don't care that he's getting killed. It's really not that intense. There's kind of a cool-ish moment um, that I was like, okay, that's actually sort of a dangerous-ish stunt that these, you know, low-budget filmmakers actually pulled off. I mean, there's parts where he's trying to, the, the killer, and I guess this ties in a little bit more to Jeff the Killer, only because it doesn't literally contradict itself and say it's a Zodiac Killer movie, and s despite the fact that the title says Jeff the Killer. You know, here, I, I don't know, I guess it ties in a little bit more to the Jeff the Killer creepypasta, but barely. It just feels like some dumb nameless uh, killer movie, but whatever, anyways, he's at the top of the stairs and the guy's coming to him and he takes a dresser and literally throws it down the stairs, I was like, okay, well they actually did that, that could have been fairly dangerous, so that's kind of cool, um, it really doesn't do anything for the movie, I can't even say it's a plus for the movie, it's just a cool little moment, like, oh, that was actually kind of dangerous, they took a little bit of a risk there when the filmmakers filmed that, so, I guess, good job, it's something, that's something, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but it's not scary. It's not intense. Um, the villain just... It comes off as more comical just when he shows up. I mean, he always shows up. Like, the guy's looking around. Then he turns around. The guy's right there. That happens, like, five or six times. It gets so repetitive. It's like, yes, I get it. Jump scare. The guy holding a knife. Just quit, just quit repeating it. Build some tension. And have likable characters that I don't want to get hurt. But yeah, it's just this guy running off on his own. He's a complete moron. He's an idiot. And what makes it even worse is because, yes, you could say this about pretty much any found footage horror film to some extent. But really, this guy has no reason to be filming. Whenever he's filming, I was like, you dumbass. Quit filming. Quit filming. Because, yes. You can say that about a lot of films, you know, in Cloverfield, when the bridge is getting taken down, yeah, a person would probably shut down the camera. But, you know, in movies like Wreck, they at least give an explanation, it's like, yeah, it's, you know, it's a news crew, they'll have at least some motivation to keep on uh, filming, you know, of anybody, a news crew is going to want to keep on filming no matter what happens, but, you know, still, technically, even in that scenario, they would drop the camera and run. But still, there's some dis suspension of disbelief, and, you know, I can, I can take it. I can be like, alright, technically, pretty much in all these movies, even the ones that do have an excuse, like, yeah, it's a news crew filming, you know, okay, even then, they would still drop the camera, but still, suspension of disbelief, okay, fine, I don't mind that much, but it can only go so far, you know, the guy, the main character, is a complete freaking moron for continuing to film, especially at the end, when he's in a coffin that is being burned alive, 
Why? The hell? Why would you would you film? It doesn't matter if you're not exactly sure what's going on. It's like, oh my gosh, the coffin's on fire and burning alive. Yeah, how about um, you quit focusing on filming because no person ever would film there. It's just moronic. It's terrible, really. And yeah, I gotta give the same rating here. And F, there's no enjoyment to be found. I, like, especially for the hour-long one, it, I really just wanted to stop watching it, and I almost just didn't want to make the video. But I gotta bring you guys this review. I've been slacking way too much with the interviral reviews. So here you go. I watched the movie. It's terrible. It's just boring. Both of these movies are completely boring, not entertaining, not scary, no likable characters. The villains are laughable. They're not uh, threatening. Yes, low budget. But it doesn't matter here because it's just not, even for what it is, I can't really give it any credit because I just didn't feel a sense of effort at all in either of these movies. And I hate to say it, but yeah, they're both F's for me, and I kind of hated these. And, you know, it, it's because of this that I'm going to have to say, you know, back in the day, uh, August 2015, so kind of a little while ago, you know, when I first uh, said, like, I'm going to start reviewing some inter-viral found footage horror films, you know, I, I put too much faith in these guys because really all they do, for the most part, is just repeat the same things over and over again, just have mostly unlikable characters just filming things and having creepy stuff happen. And yes, in a couple cases, I did legitimately appreciate it. The Rake and Slenderman. Those, you know, especially for what they are, they're pretty solid, actually fairly creepy-ish, uh, entertaining found footage horror films, and, you know, the characters in those are too bad. You know, the acting, especially considering it's all amateur, is pretty decent in those, so I enjoy those. But that's unfortunately pretty much it because all the other ones it's just a retread doing the same thing over and over again and I just can't say that I enjoyed them at all and so I'm just gonna I'm done reviewing enter viral films you know unfortunately again I like the rake and slender man but that's about it um but yeah I don't uh, mean to sound you know I'm not trying to be you know kind of a bummer here or anything and just hate on these movies for no reason but really it's just I don't feel much effort if you want to see people that really make actually pretty uh good of uh, you know cheap low budget or no budget found footage horror films on YouTube watch the YouTubers freeze frame films they consistently have pretty solid acting in their movies, and they build, even the worst efforts, they still build more tension than Enter Viral generally does. So you guys should check them out, and I might just review a film or two by them, you know, depends on if you guys want to see it. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please rate and comment and subscribe, and if you want to, you can also share. Goodbye.